Welcome to iLecture Online, and today we're going to talk about rotational motion, another topic in physics, very fundamental to physics, and I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to this particular topic. So what is rotational motion? Well, think of like a disc rotating around. So let's take a, a nice little disc. Let's say that it's rotating in a clockwise direction. And let's take a particular point on the disc, like a little corner, a little edge, or a particular dot on the edge of the disc. And so you can imagine that this dot is now going to be rotating around. And if we use the horizontal x-axis as a reference, and this disc is rotating around a clockwise direction, you can see that, that sometime later, the dot will be in a different position. So we'll have moved from there to there. And you can see that it has moved through a, a certain, what we call, angular distance. Um, and the angular distance can be denoted by the angle, let's say, theta. So theta is the distance or angular distance that it covered. So theta represents angular distance. All right. Now, how fast is it this rotating? How fast is it spinning? And so the way to express that is how big of an angle per unit time are you covering? And the variable you use for that is angular velocity, and we use the letter omega for that, the Greek letter omega, and it represents angular velocity. And you can see that the word angular keeps on being repeated, which means that this is a measure of how much of an angle we cover in a certain amount of time, or how much of an angular we cover uh, over a certain amount of time. All right, then another unit that we need to um, uh, think about is what if the disc rotates, uh, increases its rotational speed or decreases the rotational speed? That we call acceleration. And in this case, we use the letter alpha to express the, the term angular acceleration. So those are the three units or three terms that we use to describe rotational motion. And the definitions of them is that omega, by definition, is the change in angle over time. And if we want to do that in the differential equation, we can write that, we can write that as d theta dt. Angular acceleration is defined as the change in the rotational speed or rotational velocity as a function of time, or we can write this as d omega dt. So those are the definitions. And you can see that there's a lot of parallel between these units or these ways of writing uh, motion compared to the linear units of motion. And let me write the equation of kinematics in both versions. So for linear motion, we can write the three equations of kinematics as follows. We can say that x is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught times t plus 1 half at squared, or we can write that v is equal to v sub naught plus at, or we can write that v squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ax. Okay, those are the three equations of linear motion called the equation of kinematics, and we can write the equivalent equations for rotational motion. And where the equivalence comes from is that theta is the replacement for the variable x, so rotational distance is the parallel to the linear distance, omega is the parallel to the linear velocity, and alpha is the parallel to the linear acceleration. So if we take the three equations of kinematics and replace the variables x, v, and a by theta, omega, and alpha, we get the three new equations that theta is equal to theta sub naught plus um, omega sub naught times t plus one half alpha t squared. We get omega is equal to omega sub naught plus alpha t, and we get omega squared is equal to omega initial squared plus two alpha theta. And so those are the three equivalent equations for rotational motion, which will do just this exactly the same thing for us as the equation of linear motion have for linear motion. So now that we have this 
concept of what rotational motion is and how it, there's a lot of parallelism between rotational motion and linear motion, let's do a few examples now to see how we use those equations. I'll leave these equations up on the board so we can come back to them later as a reference and we'll go ahead and show you some interesting examples to help you understand these concepts. All right, so on to the next video.